Wir befinden uns hier auf dem Hauptgebäude der TU Berlin, auf dem Dach bei der Funkstation Afutub von Delta Kilo Null Tango Uniform, die k tu die Amateurfunkstation der TU Berlin. Heute wollen wir ein Experiment wagen und zwar den ersten Funkkontakt oder den einzigen Funkkontakt mit Rabia Rogge, der ersten deutschen Astronautin und gleichzeitig auch die erste bemannte Mission, welche über beide Polkappen fliegen wird, also in einem reinen polaren Orbit fliegen wird. Und oben hinauf wird das auch der erste Amateurfunkkontakt mit einer Dragon Spacecraft sein. Früher gab es das schon öfter mit der Internationalen Raumstation, welche bereits seit über 20 Jahren jetzt sich im Ortorbit befindet, auf einer wohlbekannten Orbitbahn. Einen Funkkontakt mit einer freifliegenden Mission gab es mittlerweile seit der Space Shuttle Zeit nicht mehr. Die Besonderheit darin ist, dass diese Mission jetzt erst vor wenigen Stunden gestartet ist und deshalb die Orbitparameter noch relativ unbekannt sind. Also die Positionsangabe, wo wir diese Space Capsule finden können. Oben hinaus ist das Ganze auch noch besonders, weil es der erste Amateurfunkkontakt überhaupt mit dieser Kapsel ist und deshalb noch sehr viele freie Parameter auch zu finden sind, experimentell, und sehr viele verschiedene äh, Möglichkeiten, worauf wir uns vorbereiten müssen, was genau passiert, weil das hat bisher noch keiner versucht so. Weil sich diese Raumfähre noch sehr kurz in dem Erdorbit befindet, haben wir noch eine relativ ungenaue Positionsangabe, jetzt im Vergleich zum Beispiel zur internationalen Raumstation. Das heißt, wir müssten während dieses Funkgesprächs sehr dynamisch auf das Nachführen der Antenne eingehen, indem wir nur etwa 10 bis 12 Minuten haben, von wo sich die Raumfähre am Horizont auftut, bis sie wieder am anderen Ende vom Horizont äh, verschwindet. Das heißt, wir haben sehr viele weitere Ungenauigkeiten oder Unsicherheiten über das Verhalten vom Funksignal, welches wir natürlich aufgreifen möchten, um eine Verständlichkeit der Fragen herzustellen und auch, dass Sie uns hören, weil wir müssen unsere Fragen natürlich auch erst hochbefördern äh, in diese Kapsel. Und dann auch mit dieser sehr kurzen Vorbereitungszeit, die wir haben, jetzt hier bei uns im Verein, wo sehr viele Leute auch an unterschiedlichen Themen gleichzeitig arbeiten, und da fiebern wir natürlich sehr hinaus auf dieses Thema und hoffen, dass es das alles klappt und sind aber auch jetzt durch die ganze Vorbereitung sehr sicher, dass das, wir zumindest irgendwas empfangen werden, hoffentlich. Wir sind hier im neunten Stock der Technischen Universität Berlin, direkt unter dem Dach und hier befindet sich unser Amateurfunkraum. Wir, das ist die AFUTOP, wir sind ein studentisch organisierter Verein hier an der TU Berlin. Wir haben gerade ungefähr 25 MitgliederInnen und betreiben hier als Hobby Amateurfunk. Amateurfunk, das das heißt, wir bauen unsere eigenen Antennen und unsere eigenen Funkgeräte und können damit dann mit Menschen in aller Welt kommunizieren, die ein gleiches Hobby wie wir halt machen. Wir haben es mal geschafft, bis nach Australien zu funken zum Beispiel. Hat mich sehr gefreut. Wir kennen Frau Rogge von einem befreundeten Funkclub, der an der ETH Zürich angesiedelt ist. Ähm, soweit ich weiß, hat Frau Rogge dort ihre Lizenz gemacht. Über diesen Kontakt hat es sich dann ergeben, dass wir angefragt wurden, ob wir denn an dieser Mission, an diesem Funkexperiment teilnehmen möchten, weil wir schon entsprechende Technik hier im Club zur Verfügung haben und auch einsatzbereit haben. Die Fram 2 Mission ist eine recht besondere Mission, weil sie das erste Mal äh, über beide Polkappen fliegt und das bietet natürlich eine tolle Gelegenheit, um auch Wissenschaftskommunikation zu betreiben. Und ich denke, dass man mit Amateurfunk einfach auch gut diese Publicity, die es für Wissenschaftskommunikation braucht, erreichen kann und auch junge Menschen zum Beispiel für diesen Technikbereich zu begeistern. Wir werden für unser Funkexperiment ähm, zwei Geräte benutzen, nämlich einmal für unsere Hauptstation einen Transceiver der Firma ICOM, den IC9700. Das ist ein Gerät, was besonders für den Satellitenfunk geeignet ist und wir werden dieses Gerät an einer Yagi-Antenne anschließen, mit der man sehr gut gerichtete Signale empfangen kann. Für die zweite Funkstation werden wir einen, auch einen ecom transceiver benutzen, nämlich ein IC910 und den werden wir an einer Vertikalantenne anschließen. Wir freuen uns schon sehr auf das äh, Gespräch mit Frau Rogge, hoffen, dass es klappt. Bitte drückt uns alle die Daumen und damit äh, möchten wir euch mitnehmen in die Welt der Funksprüche. Dann Livestream ab! Hi! And welcome to our live stream live here from the roof of the Technical University of Berlin. My name is Mario. I'm a member of the ro uh, local ham radio club. And today I will guide you through our experimental contact with Rabea Rogge on board of the Fram 2 mission. Behind me, you can see a big antenna setup that we will use for our contact. All our technical equipment has been prepared by my colleagues from the Ham Radio Club. And we will now go downstairs and take a quick peek at our Ham Radio Shack before we start the contact.
Start drücken, wenn wir bei drei Minuten vor sind. Okay. Jo. Okay, everyone ready for event? Yes, ready. Yeah. Audio? Audio. Are you ready? Good luck, guys, and see you soon. Thank you. All the best. <coughs> okay, audio ready for event? Timo? Yeah. Audio ready. ready for event? RX1, primary, ready for event? Ready for event. Basti, kannst du kurz disengage? Disengage. Aufnahme läuft. Kannst wieder engagen. Primary, ready for event? Ja. Yep. Secondary, ready for event? QSL, QSL, ready. SDR, ready for event? Ready for event. Tracking, ready for event? Ready for event. Questions, ready for event? Ready yes. for event. Okay, we ready are going for, for event. event. You can now see my colleagues getting ready for the contact. So all our technical equipment is ready. And in just a few minutes, the spacecraft will appear above the horizon and we will try to call them so that Rabia can answer our calls. We can take a quick peek back into the ham radio shack where you can see how uh, all our setup is prepared. Um, Robert, can you help us please? Give us a quick peek into the ham radio shack, please. Perfect. On the left-hand side, you can see our operators, Anna and Dilshad. Um, they are holding the microphone in their hand and they're getting ready for the contact. In the background, you can see on the monitors that we have a prediction of the, over, of the path of the spacecraft. So we can always know where the spacecraft is and if we are already even able to contact it. In around two minutes, the spacecraft will rise uh, above the horizon and in the beginning of the contact, there will be a str strong Doppler shift. So spacecrafts move very quickly in space, obviously. And the same way that uh, like a police siren changes its tune when it drives towards you and away from you, um, the radio signals also shift in their frequencies. This is also one of the potential risks in a contact like this, since we don't know the precise trajectory of the spacecraft yet. You can see on the left-hand side, our operator is already trying to contact the spacecraft. So she's calling. Sometimes it's possible to get a contact even behind the horizon because the radio waves are being uh, bent over the horizon if their uh, wavelength is long enough. We have a team of around six people working in the radio shack. Um, we have two operators and two people working on the rotating antenna stations. So the antennas need to track the position of the spacecraft in the sky. And therefore, we have an automated system with a computer that controls rotator systems on the roof of the building that we just saw on the video. And finally, we also record, of course, uh, all the signals that we receive so we can later analyze them and have a talk about what went well, what went wrong, and how we can hopefully make it better in the future. <laughs> I think so far we don't have a contact yet, but this is also expected since the satellite is still, or in this case, the spacecraft with Fabia on board is still uh, below the horizon. Today, Rabia will use the, spa uh, the call sign Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. So if you hear this call sign, this is basically her name during the ham radio call. Our station will use the call sign Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. So again, this is basically the name of our local station that we operate here on the roof of the Technical University of Berlin. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for scheduled contact, over. We are over horizon. So the spacecraft is now over the horizon. Okay, continue calling. And Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for contact. Over. So we will now try to call the spacecraft until we get an answer. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Over. An important point, point to note here is that the Crew Dragon spacecraft, uh, like it's Calling the first time. Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Over. 
it's the first time that a ham radio contact is uh, performed with this uh, spacecraft, so the equipment on board Lima, has not been Bravo, used in this fashion November, yet, so Juliet. there are always this a lot of Delta, variables Kilo, that we cannot zero, control. And uniform. Calling for another problem is that the spacecraft just launched a few hours ago, so usually we have a lot of time okay, to prepare passes like this because the spacecraft comes back Which many times during the day. Okay, start calling. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Over. Continue calling. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for contact. Over. So the spacecraft has now reached. Okay, switch back to primary station. Around uh, seven degrees above the horizon. Primary. Okay. And calling? calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Over. So you can hear we are continuing the call outs and calling hopefully November, once Lima, the spacecraft Bravo, rises nine, high November, enough above the horizon, Delta, uh, we get an answer. Zero, Tango, the reason Uniform, why over. contacts close to the horizon are very difficult is that we are in the midst of Berlin, so there's a lot of uh, radio interference Calling from other transmitters Bravo throughout the city nine, and November, all the way Juliet. to the horizon. Delta, Kilo, zero, ten, Usually Uniform, good contacts over. will start around 10 to 15 degrees elevation and we are currently at around uh, yeah, Lima, just a few Bravo, degrees. Nine, November, Juliet. This is Delta, Kilo, Let's zero, Tango, Inside, Uniform. yeah. Calling for contact, over. 13 degrees of the horizon. You can also hear the call-outs about Nine, the elevation. November, Juliet, this is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for contact. Over. Okay, switching to backup, uh, backup station. Backup station. So far, unfortunately, we don't get an answer, so we now calling switch to Lima, the second Bravo, channel that we have available. November, we, before the contact, we, of course, had contact zero, with Rabea, Tango, and we over. arranged like two channels that we can use just in case one of them doesn't work either on the spacecraft side or on our ground station side. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for scheduled contact. Over. 20 degrees. No signal. Calling Lima Bravo. You can hear the call outs of the operators on uh, in the station. Kilo, zero, and tango, on the right hand side, you can also see our ham radio over. transceiver that we are using okay, in the top to right corner of the image that's currently shown. Okay. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Over. You can see our primary operator Anna here. And yeah, we will continue calling until calling we get an Lima, answer. Bravo, nine, November, it is also not unexpected Juliet. that this a contact like Delta, this can Kilo, sometimes zero, not work. Tango, since uniform, the spacecraft just launched, contact, we over. don't have experience with this spacecraft in particular. And even everything uh, is prepared perfectly, Lima, it Bravo, can still be nine, some problem. November, also, this is we don't Delta, have a lot of contact zero, with Rabia on the spacecraft, uniform, obviously. Over. And we don't know, maybe they also have some technical difficulties or they don't know the exact past times as well. Calling Lima Bravo 9 November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Calling for scheduled contact. Over. Okay. Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. I got you loud and clear. How me? Can you hear me? This is Lima Bravo November 9 Juliet. Over. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. We hear you loud and clear. Are you ready for questions? Confirm. I'm ready to qu for questions. Good to hear your voice. All right, then question one from the mayor. You have taken a piece of technological history into space. Do you have any tips for us on how we can get more Berliners interested in space travel? Over. Copy your question. I would say be just not the person that says no to other person's dreams. I think we need more of that in Berlin, but be the person that always says yes and, and lifts up people if they have a new idea. Question two from Camille. What are your tasks on board the spacecraft? Over. My tasks on board the spacecraft are piloting and research coordination. Question three from Ruby. What does it feel like in zero gravity? I repeat, question three from Ruby. What does it feel like in zero gravity? Over.
since we are still not hearing the answers here on the live stream at Calling least. Lima, Bravo 9, November, Juliet. This is Delta, Kilo 0, Tango, Uniform. Over. I will give you a little bit of background here. So we now switch the operators uh, to deal chart and we will continue with the questions. Calling Lima, Bravo 9, November, Juliet. This is Delta. No Calling Lima, Bravo 9, November, Juliet. This is Delta, Kilo 0, Tango, Uniform. We have no signal. Continue calling. Calling Lima Bravo Nine. As you heard, November, we this is Delta lost our Kilo, voice signal. Uniform. Can you read us? But we will still continue calling. Sometimes this is especially expected during the highest part of the pass, because our calling orbital Lima, data is Bravo not uh, Nine, like November, perfect. Juliet. This, is Delta, this will be where the biggest Zero, error is because the spacecraft, when it's close to the horizon, us? it moves very slowly relative to us. When it's directly overhead, the speed is very high. So even a small error Calling in our predictions Lima, Bravo, means a large November, error in the elevation Delta, angle Kilo, that we have to Tango, like, track the satellite, uh, or in this case, the spacecraft. So I would assume that in just a few seconds, we will hopefully get the signal back Calling and get an answer. Calling Lima Bravo 9, November Juliet. This is Delta Kilo Zero Tango Uniform. Can you read us? Over. Three minutes. Calling Lima Bravo 9, no, no, November Juliet. Around three minutes left Delta until Kilo the Zero Tango Uniform. Uh, Can you read us? Over. Okay, we'll end again. the call. Is QSO now? And they will now end the contact. So they will switch to Can the end you, of the QSO. Thank you very much for this nice contact. It's Give us a round of applause. Maybe we can later get some of the audio okay. back, but currently, um, yeah, all in all, I have to say it's quite impressive that everything kind of worked. So we got around, I would say, three to four minutes of contact time where we could talk directly to Rabia and she answered some of the questions that we collected from students and also from the mayor of Berlin and yeah hopefully we can use this to get some outreach for yeah studying here for example and all uh, technical um, studies that we offer and also arts and mathematics and all of this and yeah, a little bit of background. Rabia started studying here in Berlin, and many years ago she switched to Zurich, and we had our first radio contact when she took part in the ham radio class in Zurich. We also have a ham radio class here. We have a close cooperation with the ETH Zurich, so kind of closes the full circle. Her first ham radio call was here, and now her first ham radio call from space, also to Geo Berlin here. Very nice. If you ever want to take a look at our facilities here, or maybe talk to some of us, we will also be here during the long night of science in the end of June, here at the Technical University of Berlin. 